Hi guys and gals, today I'm going to read chapter 7 and 8 from Win dixie Back when Florida was wild, it consisted of nothing but palmetto trees and mosquitoes so big that they could fly away with you, Miss Franny Block started in, and I was just a little girl no bigger than you when my father, Herman W. Block, told me that I could have anything that I wanted for my birthday anything at all. Miss Franny looked around the library. She leaned in close to me. I don't want to appear prideful, but my daddy was a very rich man. A very rich man. Mm -hmm. She nodded. And then she leaned back and said, and when I was a little girl who loved to read. So I told him, daddy, I would most certainly love to have a library for my birthday. A small library would be wonderful. You asked for a whole library? A small one, said Miss Franny. I wanted a little house full of nothing but books, and I wanted to share them, too. And I got my wish. My father built me this house, this very one we're sitting in now. And at a very young age, I became a librarian, yes, ma'am. So what about the bear, I said. Oh, did I mention that Florida was wild in those days? Miss Franny Block said. Mm-hmm, you did? Well, it was wild. There was wild men, there was wild women, and there were wild animals. Like bears? Yes, ma'am, that's right. Now, I have to tell you, I was a little Miss Know-It-All. I was a little Miss Smarty Pants with my library full of books. Oh, yes, ma'am. I thought I knew the answers to everything. Well, one very hot Thursday, I was sitting in my library with all the doors and windows open and my nose stuck in a book when a shadow crossed the desk. And without even looking up, yes, ma'am, without even looking up, I said, is there a book I can help you find? Well, there was no answer. And so I thought it might have been one of those wild men or one of those wild women scared of all these books and afraid to speak up. But when I became very aware of a peculiar smell, a very strong smell, I raised my eyes slowly and standing right in front of me was a bear. Yes, ma'am, a very large bear. How big, I asked. Oh, well, said Miss Franny. Perhaps three size, three times the size of your dog? Well, then what happened, I asked her. Well, said Miss Franny, I looked at him, and he looked at me, and he put his nose up in the air, and he sniffed and sniffed as if he was trying to decide if he wanted a little Miss Know-It-All librarian for lunch that day. Was that what he was in the mood to eat? And I sat there and I thought, if this bear intends to eat me, I'm not going to let it happen without a fight. No, ma'am. So very slowly and very carefully, I raised up the book that I was reading. What book was it? I asked. Why, it was War and Peace. It is a very large book. I raised it slowly and I aimed it carefully and I screamed at that bear. Be gone! And you know what? No, ma'am. He went. But this is what I'll never forget. He took that book with him. <sighs> nuh uh, I said. Yes, ma'am. He snatched it up and ran. Did he ever come back? Never saw him again. Well, the men in town, they used to tease me about it. They used to say, Hey, Miss Franny, we saw that barriers out in the woods today. He was reading that book, and he said it sure was good. And would I mind if he kept it just another week? Yes, ma'am, they used to tease me about it. <laughs> she sighed. I imagine I'm the only one left from those days. I imagine I'm the only one who even recalls that bear. All my friends and everyone I know when I was young, they're all dead and gone now. <sighs> she sighed again, and she looked sad and old and wrinkled. 
It was the same way I felt sometimes. Being friendless in a new town, not having a mama to comfort me. <sighs> I sighed too. When Dixie raised his head off his paws and he looked back and forth between me and Miss Franny Block, he sat up and then he showed Miss Franny his teeth. Well, will you look at that. That dog is smiling at me. Oh, it's a talent of his, I told her. That is a fine talent, said Miss Franny. A very fine talent. And she smiled back at Win Dixie. We could be friends, I said to Miss Franny. I mean, you and me and Win Dixie, we could all be friends. Miss Franny smiled even bigger. <gasps> Why, that would be grand, just grand. And right at that minute, right when the three of us decided to be friends, who should come walking into the Herman W. Block Memorial Library but old pinch-faced Amanda Wilkinson. She walked right up to Miss Franny's desk and said, I finished Johnny Tremaine. I enjoyed it very much. I would like something even more difficult to read because I am an advanced reader. Yes, dear, I know, said Miss Franny, and she got up out of her chair. Amanda pretended like I wasn't even there. She stared straight past me. Are dogs allowed in the library? She asked Miss Franny as Miss Franny walked away. Certain ones, said Miss Franny. A select few. And then she turned around and winked at me. I smiled back. I would just made my first friend in Naomi and nobody was going to mess that up for me. Not even old pinched face Amanda Wilkinson. Chapter 8. When Dixie's bald spots had started growing fur, and the fur that he had to begin with started to look shiny and healthy, he didn't limp anymore either. And you could tell that he was proud of looking so good. Proud of not looking like a stray anymore. I thought what he needed most was a collar and a leash. So when I went to Gertrude's pets, I saw fish, I saw snakes, and mice, and lizards, and birds, and gerbils, and pet supplies. And there I found a real handsome red leather collar with a matching leash. When Dixie wasn't allowed to come inside the store, there's a big sign on the door that said, No dogs allowed. So I held up the collar and the leash out the window, pulled, and when Dixie pulled up his lip to show me his teeth, that he approved. Then he started wagging his tail and he sneezed, so I knew that he absolutely loved the leash and collar combination. But it was very expensive. I decided to explain my situation to the man behind the counter. I said, I don't get a big enough allowance to afford something this fancy, but I love this collar and leash, and so does my dog. And I was thinking maybe you could set me up on some sort of installment plan? Installment plan, said the man. Gertrude! Somebody screamed in a real irritating voice. I looked around. It was a parrot. She was sitting on top of one of the fish tanks, looking right at me. An installment plan, I said, ignoring the parrot. You know, where I promise to give you my allowance every week and you give me the leash and collar now? I don't think I can do that, said the man. He shook his head. No, the owner, she wouldn't like that very much. He looked down at the counter. He wouldn't look at me, though. He had thick black hair, and it was slicked back like Elvis. And he had a name tag that said, Otis. Or maybe I could work for you? I could come in and sweep the floors and dust the shelves and take out the trash? I could do that. I looked around Gertrude's pets. There was sand and sunflower seed shells on the floor and big dust bunnies everywhere. I could tell it needed to be swept. Uh, said Otis. He looked down at the counter. Gertrude, the parrot screamed again. Oh, I'm real trustworthy. I'm new in town, but my daddy is the preacher. He's the preacher at the Open Arms Baptist Church in Naomi. So I'm real honest. But the only thing is, when Dixie, my dog, he'd have to come inside with me because if we get separated for too long, he starts to howl something terrible. Uh, Gertrude doesn't like dogs, said the man. Oh, is she the owner? 
Yes. I, I, I mean, no. Finally, he looked up, and he pointed to the fish tank. That Gertrude, the parrot. I named her after the owner. Gertrude's a pretty bird. She might like one, Dixie, I told Otis. Almost everybody does. Maybe he could come inside and meet her. And if the two of them get along, then maybe I could have the job? Maybe, Otis mumbled, and he looked down at the counter again. So I went and opened the door, and when Dixie came trotting on inside the store, Dog! screamed Gertrude. I know it, Otis told her. And then Gertrude got real quiet. She sat on the top of the fish tank and cocked her head from one side to the other, looking at Win Dixie. And when Dixie stood and stared back at her, he didn't hardly move. He didn't wag his tail. He didn't smile. He didn't sneeze. And then she spread her wings real far. She flew across the room and landed right on Win Dixie's head. Dog! she croaked. When Dixie wagged his tail just a little tiny bit, and Otis said, You can start on Monday. Thank you, I told him. You won't be sorry. And on the way out of Gertrude's pets, I said to Win Dixie, You're better at making friends than anybody I've ever known. I bet if my mama knew you, she would think you were the best dog ever. When Dixie was smiling up at me and I was smiling down at him, so neither one of us were looking where we were going when we almost bumped right into Sweetie Pie Thomas. She was standing there sucking on her knuckle of her third finger, staring in the window of Gertrude's pets. She took her finger out of her mouth and looked at me. Her eyes were all big and round. Was that bird sitting on that dog's head? She asked. She had her hair up in a ponytail with a pink ribbon, but it wasn't much of a ponytail. It was mostly a ribbon with a few strands of hair. Mm-hmm, I told her. I seen it, she said. She nodded her head and then put her knuckle back in her mouth. Then she took it out again real quick. I seen that dog in church, too. He was catching a mouse. I want a dog like that. But my mama said she won't let me get no dog. She says if I'm real good, I can get a goldfish. Maybe one of them gerbils? That's what she says. Can I pet your dog? <laughs> sure, I told her. Sweetie Pie stroked Win Dixie's head so long and serious that his eyes drooped half closed and drool came out the side of his mouth. I'm going to be six years old in September. I got to stop sucking on my knuckle once I'm six, said Sweetie Pie. I'm having a party. Do you want to come to my party? The theme is pink. Sure, I told her. Can this dog come too? She asked. You bet, I said. And then all of a sudden, I felt kind of happy. I had a dog. I had a job. I had Miss Franny Block for a friend. And now I had my first invitation to a party in Naomi. Didn't matter that it came from a five-year-old and the party wasn't until September. But I didn't feel so lonely anymore. All right, so that was chapter seven and eight of Win Dixie. I can't wait to see what happens in chapter nine.